Getting started with Turtle. Prerequisites. As Turtle is built into Python, there are only a couple of things that you'll need. Firstly, Python. This may seem somewhat obvious, but you'll need Python 3 installed on your computer to follow along. This will need to be on a computer with a graphical user interface, such as Windows, Mac OS, or a desktop version of Linux. Put simply, if you use a mouse to control your computer, you should be okay. Python 3 can be downloaded from the Python website, python.org, and if you need help, take a look at the Real Python guide by following this link or searching on the Real Python site. Python environment. For much of this course, you'll see the Python REPL being used. This allows entry of Python commands and their instant execution. For the final project, the code will be written in an editor, as this code is longer and more complex than any of the previous examples, and it will be built up in stages. In my case, I'll be using Visual Studio Code, but you can use any editor, such as Idle, which is installed alongside Python. And that's it. You're ready to start using Python Turtle, so let's head into the next section and see it in action. Getting Turtle on screen. Here you will see how to move towards using Turtle. The terminal command prompt is what's needed to run the Python REPL, so we'll just take a quick look at how to launch on macOS, Linux, and Windows. On macOS, summon Spotlight Search by holding down the command key and tapping the spacebar. You can then type terminal and hit enter once it appears at the top of the search. On Ubuntu Linux, tap the Windows or Command key depending on the hardware you're running on, and then type Terminal. Once again, when it's the highlighted choice, you can launch it using Enter. On Windows, you're looking for the Command Prompt. Tap the Windows key and type the first parts of Command until it appears highlighted on the Start menu. You can then run it with Enter. Next, a quick word about the REPL itself. You can run it by typing Python, or sometimes Python 3, and you should see the prompt ready for you to enter commands. The Python REPL is perfectly functional, and it will run every command that you see in this course, but throughout I will be making use of bPython, which is an improved REPL. It features colour coding, as well as on-screen information about available functions and what parameters they take. Once you're in the REPL of your choice, the first step is to import turtle. This allows Python to use the turtle commands that we will be using throughout this course. Whenever you start a new Python session and want to use turtle, you'll need to enter this line. Don't be afraid to start again by exiting using exit. This will destroy the turtle window when Python stops running. Then simply run the REPL and import turtle again. Import and naming conventions. The Python documentation example imports turtle using this command, from turtle import star. This has good and bad points, but I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner, simply because then it's not easy to tell if a command is a built-in Python command or if it's part of the turtle library. Instead, make use of import turtle as previously seen. This is easier to understand because every method will be preceded by the word turtle and a dot. When you're first experimenting with Turtle, you can use the Turtle objects and methods without any reference. For instance, you can just type turtle.getScreen and a screen will appear. The other commands used for controlling the Turtle will also work in the same way, but this can mean a lot more typing, and it's much easier to assign a variable name to them, a bit like naming a pet, as then you know you are always referring to the correct object. Whenever you choose a variable name, try to balance making it meaningful with keeping it succinct. When you come back to your code in a few weeks time, it makes reading the code so much easier if the variable names make sense. Initially, you will see S used to refer to the screen and T to refer to a turtle. With that out of the way, let's look at programming Python turtle, exploring the features and functions that are present. Programming with turtle. This section will be broken up into four main parts. Moving the turtle, drawing shapes, altering the turtle, 
and some other functions. So let's get started by looking at moving the turtle. Moving the turtle. Here you will see all of the steps needed. Firstly, importing the turtle library, creating a new screen referenced by S, and a turtle referenced by T. Our turtle has four movement commands, forward and backward, which need distance as a parameter, and left and right, which need an angle as their parameter. As these might be a little long-winded to type, there are abbreviations for each of them. GoTo makes use of the coordinate system which is present on the turtle canvas. It's useful to be aware of the coordinates that are on screen, as sometimes it can make programming simpler to directly move the turtle to a location or measure its position. As you can see on screen, the coordinate system starts with 0, 0 at the centre. Moving to the right gives positive values of the x coordinate, and moving to the left gives negative values. A similar situation exists for the y coordinate, where an upwards movement from the home position is positive, and a downwards movement is a negative one. Each quadrant has a characteristic combination of positive and negative values for x and y. GoTo uses these two coordinates to send the turtle to a specific location, as you can see here. Home sends the turtle back to the home location, which is the same as go to zero zero. It's possible to obtain the turtle's current position with the pause command. Mimicking the original physical turtle, there are the pen up and pen down commands, which control whether the turtle leaves a track behind it as it moves around on screen. Let's send the turtle home. and then make use of the clear command to clear everything it's drawn so far. Now that you've seen how to move the turtle, in the next section, you'll take a look at getting it to draw some more complex shapes. Drawing shapes. Creating regular polygons is done by issuing the same command multiple times. For instance, a square has straight lines and 90 degree turns at each corner. Turtle has a couple of preset shapes which you can make use of in your programs, the first of which is circle. As you can see, it needs a radius as a minimum, and it draws a circle for you. However, there are two other parameters that you can use which can make things more interesting. The first is extent, which is how far around in degrees the circle will be drawn. So here setting it to 180 degrees, half the circle is drawn. Steps allows you to pick how many steps the turtle will take to draw the circle. This makes it easy to draw regular polygons by setting the steps to the number of sides you want it to have. Here, setting it to 3 draws a triangle. Setting it to 4 draws a square, and so on. Another preset shape is the dot, which takes size and colour as its arguments. We'll come to colour later on in the course, but for the time being, Let's enter a size. As you can see, a filled in circle has appeared where the turtle currently is. 
and we can create another one by issuing the same command again. Now you've seen that Turtle can help you out by making the drawing of shapes easier, in the next section you'll take a look at how to alter the turtle's appearance.